Hello and welcome to my Afri Styles channel. I am glad that you are here today. I hope you will gain value from this quick video which will be looking at Kanga. My name is Maua. Now let's get into this video. So today's video will focus on the history of Kanga, its design, use and care. Without further delay, let's answer the question. What? is a kanga. A kanga is a piece of African fabric with a deep history. Kanga usually comes as a pair, commonly referred to as doti, which to me means double the fun. A typical kanga has three main parts. Pindo, which is the border surrounding the mdi, which is the center. And finally, one of the most important part of modern kanga, the same, or as it's said, msemo, or ujumbe. This part is what sells the kanga, because it relays a message from the wearer to the world. Kanga is usually made from 100% cotton fabric, with each pair measuring approximately 66 by 43 inches. The pair is usually shipped uncut, making the full length of the fabric to be about 132 by 43 inches. Kanga shares its name with a beautiful spotted guinea fowl, which is often seen around some parts of East African countries. In other places, Kanga is also known as Leso. So keep that in mind when searching for your pair. Kanga as we know it today originated from the coastal region of East Africa, which comprises of Kenya, Tanzania and Uganda as the main countries. It has and continues to be a crucial part of the everyday life for tens of millions of people, both men and women in those regions. There is so much more that can be said about how the rectangular piece of kanga clothes came to be. It is said to have been inspired by the unbleached calico cloth traded from the US called Americani that was used in pre-colonial times. Combined with influences from the block printed and dyed indigo clothes from India called Kaniki and the well-known Visutu or handkerchief-like clothes that the Portuguese brought in the East African coast. There are a couple of thorough documentation of this journey that Kanga took and those links are provided below for the scholars who would like more information. But the takeaway here is that what may have started as a plain piece of material, the East African people transformed it to a beautiful and meaningful piece of cultural heritage that we all love today. Now, let's switch gears a little bit and talk about how you can use and care for your kanga. Kanga comes in so many sizes, colors, designs, and quality, and its use is so vast. I bet you too can come up with a clever way to wear kanga. Growing up, I have used kanga for personal care, meaning as a towel or cover, as a blanket. I've also used it in many of our traditional dances while in school. I wish I had a picture to share, but I don't have one for now. I carried babies in them like these beautiful ladies are doing here. Carried items on my head using kanga as a kata. Also, when we go to funerals, we almost always wear kanga wrapped like this. As for weddings, well, <laughs> there we give kanga to the bride, mother of the bride, 
aunties of the bride and groom's mother and so forth we also decorate with kanda i mean the possibilities are endless here and nowadays bridesmaid dresses are utilizing kanga and other african print as part of their main design now because of the ease with which kanga can carry a message to the people it is a staple in political rallies as well as in commemorations of important events now Modern day use of kanga can be playful and fun. You can turn your kanga into tank tops, crop tops, cute summer outfits, or scarves for the cooler seasons. All of this can be done with or without sewing. Some of the staple use is head wraps for many occasions. Skirts, both long and minis for other occasions, beach wear or dresses i mean you just have to bring your imagination to life now heavier kangas have been made into different types of clothes for men and women as well as larger items such as curtains tablecloths bed sheets with pillowcases and other decorative items apart from being worn as is so as you can see the possibilities are endless when it comes to kanga, and that is why I love and cherish each pair that I receive and delight in each pair that I give. Now, once you own your pair of kanga, the next logic question will likely be how do you take care of your kanga to preserve its quality and longevity? Here's what I do with my kanga. One, hand washing it or machine washing it with cold water and mild detergent. I avoid like a plague, harsh soap or chemicals that will discolor the fabric. If you're lucky and have sunny weather, then consider lime drying your kanga or if you live in colder climate, then tumble dry low on low heat. This will help the longevity of your fabric and its vibrant colors. And lastly, if your fabric creases, then you can simply iron it with moderate heat and you're good to go. Thank you for watching. If you found value and like what you saw, then feel free to join my Afri Styles community. See you on our next video. Remember, Pamodia, we can.